Welcome back to coverage of GP Las Vegas. This is Gabby Sparks joined by Luis Scott Vargas. We are in round 11, and we're going to see uh, UB Thopter Sword versus Bring to Bring Light, to Light Scape Shift. Shift. All right, so we see Bring to Light Scape Shift is uh, Sun Jing On, and Travis Da Silva is on Lantern Control. He, that, he, is, he, that is incorrect. We yeah. will have that updated. Yeah, he's on the... I, 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 the, the confusion makes sense because he is playing Ensnaring Bridge and Word of Invention, but in Mishra's Bobble. But instead of trying to lock the opponent out with uh, Graft Diggers or uh, Ghoul Caller's Bell or Lantern of Insight, it's trying to assemble the Thopter Sword combo that I just described. So, Pithing Needle turn one kind of completely in the dark. What do you what, <laughs> what do you usually do here? Honestly, against Overgrown Tomb Tapped, I would probably name Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Yeah, that's a very reasonable name. And Oh, and and we get a confirmation Pithing Needle is indeed naming Liliana of the Veil. It's got to feel good for uh, Sung Jing An when your opponent plays turn on Pithing Needle and names a card that is not in your deck because uh, the Bring to Light Scape Shift decks. So we've got two pretty sweet decks here. Yeah, can you actually walk us? So these are two combo decks. Can you walk us a little bit through what each one is trying to do? Yeah, so the Scape Shift deck is playing Scape Shift and Valakut and the Molten Pinnacle, much like uh, you know some of the decks we've seen before. But instead of the Titan Shift variety, which tries to play all mountains and cast use natural Valakuts and uh, Primeval Titans, this deck is pr fully built on Scape Shift, and it uses the card Bring to Light in order to find Scape Shift. So it has uh, effectively six copies of Scape Shift, two copies of Scape Shift for Bring to Lights, and Bring to Light, because it lets you search up specific cards, lets you play like one Hunting Wilds and uh, one Anger of the Gods and one Damnation, cards that uh, let you find you know whatever it is you need. So this deck is trying to accelerate a bunch of mana. Once it has seven or eight lands in play, depending on the opponent life to opposing life total, it'll Scape Shift and it'll do... 18 or 36 damage, depending on how many lands it has in play. So there you see Thopter Foundry, one of the first pieces of the combo for, for Travis. Sacrifice a non-token artifact. You make a 1-1 blue Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and you gain one life. Right, and it looks like Travis is assembling the combo here. He, he's just casting a Worm Invention for two. Alongside Thopter Foundry, you want Sword of the Meek. So this is a somewhat innocuous equipment, but it has the ability that says whenever a 1-1 one, one creature comes into play on, on your side, return Sword of the Meek from your graveyard to, your, to the battlefield equipping that creature. So every time you pay one mana, you sacrifice Sword of the Meek, and you make a 1-1 one, one token with Thopter Foundry, which then re-equips the sword from the graveyard. So you end up with a bunch of 1-1s one, and a 2-3, and gain a bunch of life, and you can usually beat most modern decks with that combo. Unfortunately for Travis, this is one of the few matchups where... That combo actually doesn't go over the top because if uh, Sung can just get to eight lands in play, two Valakuts, six mountains, 36 damage. All right, so he is able to get the Sword of the Meek into play. And So from this spot, now that Travis, like each mana is going to get him f even further ahead, uh, what is uh, Sun Jing On looking to do? Both decks are doing their thing. Travis has assembled the, the quick Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry combo, and Sung Jing An is casting Search for Tomorrows and Sakura Tribal is trying to just get to eight lands in play and cast Bring to Light or Scape Shift. Either one of those is generally going to be lethal. How much of a problem is it that um, the Thopter Sword combo gains Travis' life? It, for, mean, for it on means that On can't go off with seven lands, because seven lands is one Valakut and six mountains. That's 18 damage. But... An additional land means you can just get two Valakuts and, mm -hmm. and six Mountains, which is 36 damage, which is going to be more than Travis can, can take because Travis, even at gaining one life per mana, is many turns away from doing that. I have seen a couple of people in chat asking why, Lili uh, why Liliana the Veil is being named with that. Travis played that on turn one, so he had no information about what An was playing except for an overgrown tomb. So in the dark... Uh, he chose to go with Lily of the Veil, vale, which is a very reasonable choice. However, it is not in On's deck. Right, and he had the information of Overgrown Tomb. That was it. So that was that was a good choice, I think, with that uh, with that uh, per information at the time. Though obviously, at this point, he would have named Sakura Tribelder or something along those lines. Mark Chalice has a question. With the uh, Thopter Sword combo, do you think Time Sieve 
or Time Sieve could be an integral part of this deck. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. That's an artifact for a blue and a black mana that you can tap it and sack five artifacts to take an additional turn. Once you're going off with Thopter Sword, you actually get infinite turns because you can really make sweet. five tokens a turn. But yeah. that, that is uh, a little bit win more for my taste. I have seen people play that. I just don't think it's necessary. Also, there's people asking why he played the Pithing Needle on turn one. But having the Pithing Needle in play has extra value when you have Worm and Invention. So that is able to get him the, the sword. It's essentially a land of elves. It, yeah, it, it yeah, let him yeah. curve out perfectly with turn one needle, turn two Thopter Foundry, turn three Whirr, which is good enough in most matchups. All right, so this is War of Invention number two. All right, well. Oh, but that's going to get remanded. Oh, okay, because I was going to see what kind of silver bullets does, uh, does Travis have. Oh, he actually has a combo. <laughs> He's playing Kark Clan Ironworks, and with this combo, he gets to gain infinite life, make infinite tokens. Oh, that is sweet. Because each token sacks for two mana, and each mana makes another token. Yeah. So that will, and he so just has it. So then there's a KCI. So with this combo, Travis De Silva gets the check mark, and unless uh, on Sung Jing On has another answer, that that is infinite mana, and infinite uh, infinite life, and infinite tokens, which means that Travis won't die to escape shift, and will next turn attack for. For you know, infinite, yeah. An ar arbitrarily large amount of damage. Wow, that is that is such a great addition to the deck. I'd, I'd actually never seen this before. I played uh, I played Doctor Sword with Tezret back at Worlds many many years ago. It was pretty sweet. Look at that! Look Whoa. at that! Oh. So he's going thirty. He's not going infinite, but uh, or but we'll, we'll see uh, we'll see where where that ends up. Okay, thirty one. <laughs> Yeah, 66,666. Oh. 66, All right, yeah, we, we got our producer to confirm that that is, in fact, uh, many, many more than 30. So taking a look back at Sung Jing An's deck list, does he have any... No, nothing weird. If so... Okay, here, here... Let me see if I can assemble some outs. Okay, I've got, I've got right. a plan. He has to go... First, Maelstrom Pulse on... Thopter Foundry, because that will stop the, the, the combo from continuing. And then cast Damnation or Anger of the Gods, exiling all the tokens. Okay. Or you're killing all the tokens. And then cast Jace, the one copy of Jace the Mind Sculptor, tick Jace up to ultimate, and ultimate Jace decking Travis De Silva. Oh, because that's the only way he can actually kill him. All right. So, this so is convoluted, but I'm digging it. Can yeah. he even cast Anger of the Gods? He does have that steam vent, so that... Okay, yeah. Yeah, so th this is this is our set of outs. It's easy. All it takes is a one of and then, uh, and then no, another one no, of and then no, another no, one no, of. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did you see the life total for Travis? It is in. Oh, yeah. D technically, it's not, though. That's actually a graphical error. Uh, infinite, infinite doesn't, uh, there's no way to go infinite magic. You actually have to choose a number arbitrarily yeah, large. But we know the number was 6666666666666. Right. Six, 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 six. <laughs> That was uh, that was actually really cool. Um, how good do you think this this deck is in modern? Because it, you know, it's people great. It just had infinite life, infinite tokens. Answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think that the tra the Thopter Sword deck it, it, it falls into the same band as like KCI Lantern Affinity, where yeah, the cards Stony Silence and Ancient Grudge are going to be problematic for you. On the flip side, this deck is doing some slightly different things that other people aren't necessarily going to expect, especially if they think they're playing against like a Lantern deck. Or a Tezzeret deck, or something oh, along yeah, those lines. This is not a common deck. No, it, it is it, definitely this not. This is definitely off the beaten path, but it is sweet. And I like the fact that uh, the Thopter Sword combo by itself is just good against a lot of decks. You don't need a whole lot of other things, whereas the Lantern combo deck needs a bridge and a Lantern and a way to mill the opponent. KCI needs like three or four different combo pieces. This is a two card combo against decks that, that can't beat you through a bunch of 1 1s. Unfortunately, the Bring the Light Scapeshift deck doesn't actually care about the 1-1s one until it goes infinite, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like Travis needs a 3-card combo there. But it still looks like a pretty effective deck in the matchup, especially since War of Invention really kicked all these decks up to the next level. It's just, you know, a 3-mana tutor that puts the card back directly into play. It's kind of like a Tinker, and Tinker was yeah. one of the oh, historically busted. busted cards. Do these players get anything sweet post-board? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, so, Sung Jin On gets an Abrupt Decay and a Destructive Revelry and some Negates. And a Shatterstorm. Shatterstorm, very effective. Mm -hmm. So, those are some pretty solid uh, options, especially since you have to remember this Bring to Light Scapeshift deck has Bring to Light. And that means that every Bring to Light off 
acts as another copy of these sideboard cards. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, Travis is going to have to play against five Shatter Storms, which is, which is one of the strengths of the Bring to Light deck. Taking a look at Travis's deck, uh, he's got Collective Brutality to take instants or sorceries out of the opposing hand, Surgical Extraction if he can make a key piece of the combo hit the graveyard, and Thought Seizes. So, plus maybe some Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas. Tezzeret is a, a good card to go aggressive when your opponent's overloading on spot removal. Mm -hmm. So I, I like uh, how much uh, Sung Jin improves post-board more than Travis. Sure. Shatterstorm in particular looks really good. Yeah, having so many copies of it sounds awesome. But uh, tr but Travis is able to cut like the dead ensnaring bridges or like Graft Digger's Cage and uh, put in and put in thought seizes and th that I that does help. So as far as bring to like scape shift, uh, which version do you like better? Do you just like regular green red scape shift? How much how much better do you think the bring to light version is or is it too much of a downside to have the really tough mana requirements? It, it kind of depends on the field you expect because the the red green scape shift deck is a little bit faster okay. and a little bit more consistent, but it's also less powerful. And for for example, we saw that uh, you know we, we saw like Megan Wolf play play this in round one, mm -hmm. and she got her Valakut's surgical extracted with field ruin. Because and she was playing the regular red green the straight, straight red green Titan yeah. ship version. And that deck's going to be more vulnerable to that because it's frequently going to play a Valakut and then start trying to grind you out. Yeah. The Bring to Light version never plays Valakut until it just kills you, or very rarely does, because it just kills in one fell swoop. And that means it's more resistant to cards like Field of Ruin than sure. the other version. I do also like that the Bring to Light deck gets a lot better post-board because it gets to board in, you know, like I said, essentially five copies of all the different cards that, that it br brings in because of the four Bring to Lights. So I do have a funny update about uh, what happened in Matt Nassis and Tiago's match. Uh, in game one, Tiago had mult to three, and then he decided to mult to zero on the play just to verify what Na Matt Nass was playing, and then conceded. <laughs> Looks like uh, On is mulliganing here. And yeah, if Sung Jing On you know, ends up mulling to five or four, things could get pretty hairy for him. Have you played much with Thor Thopter Sword? This was a combo that was banned originally in Modern. I guess it was unbanned quite a bit ago now, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly when it was unbanned. I had played it a lot back in Extended, and I did enjoy playing that that deck, uh, especially when like Dark Depths and Vampire Hex Mage was legal. The, Ooh, that's, the, that's nice. The best deck was a Thopter, a Thopter Depths deck. It, it, it had a both co both those combos yeah. going. Um, in the current state of modern, you don't see the deck very often because of its weaknesses to a lot of the common anti-artifact cards. But if Travis has a good version and he's nine one right now and up again, you know that that offers some some evidence that he, you know, ha has a good plan here. This is hope. Oh, I know yeah. what this is. Uh, this is uh, the altar, I believe. This, what it does is every time. Yes, Altar of the Brood. See, you should know that, actually. It's kind of embarrassing you don't because... Because, you, 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 you know, the Viper Brood is your stream team. It is true. I played this card in a Pro Tour, uh, much to my chagrin. Why do I always play bad combo decks at Pro Tours? Anyways, this is a one-mana artifact that says whenever a permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you can mill your opponent for one. And it's a way to uh, mill your opponent out and and win that way. It's got a... Uh, it's got a... Uh, a, a combo finish, like you make infinite tokens and you mill their whole deck. You were saying that you have played KCI before. Was that was that a long time ago? I've also played KCI uh, back when it was in Standard. I played the Cart Clan Ironworks KCI was in combo. Standard? Yeah, there was a Cart Clan Ironworks combo deck in Standard. Was and this it good? It was good, but it was worse than Affinity because they were both, you know, they both had problems with the same cards and, and Affinity was slightly faster. All right, so the Pentad Prism is going to get remanded. Do you think Sung Jing On remanded it because he wanted to stop the Prism or because he didn't want to get milled for one by Altar of the Brood? Mm.
I will admit, coming to this Grand Prix, I did not think I would have to talk about Altar of the Brood. <laughs> We've actually seen some uh, pretty off-the-beaten-path decks at a pretty good records. Yeah, the, the, the Modern already are, does a lot of sweet stuff. And uh, one interaction that's going on here that is worth mentioning, and it's funny because we talked about how milling your opponent is usually neutral, right? You're not going to mill their good cards or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not entirely true in this specific case because Sung Jin An is actually playing near a bare minimum number of mountains to win with his combo. He needs almost all of them. He's got seven mountains in his deck, eight mountains in his deck. If Travis can mill three mountains, Sung Jin An can no longer go off. Alter of the Brute could actually deliver a win condition. And that's only because... And that's, again, the specific case where you need this exact concentration I of a specific card. I feel like you're card. teaching the viewers all these lessons about what not to do, and then you're like, but there's nuance here and here and well, here. Well, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> and, and usually when I say here's the thing, it's because I'm backed into a corner, but here's the actual thing. Magic is a complicated game, and context can change things dramatically. There's almost always a corner case. When you say, like, you know, this is X... There's almost always like a little asterisk where, well, you know, when Y, Z, and Q are true, then this this is no longer true. Yeah. So, in this in, in this particular case, Alter the Brood could could negate Sung Jing An's plan. Though also notice that Sung Jing An is not playing more lands. Just got two islands in play, no green sources. Mm -hmm. Look, chat's learning the wrong lesson. Always mill your opponent. Got it. Yep. That that, that that's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Look, I think Magic is more interesting for Ooh, it. Ooh, milling a mountain there is there's a big game. And there's two milled already. Yeah. If if Travis mills one more mountain, I don't actually know how... Does he have anything to Sung attack Jin with? Is, ...is supposed to win. He's got uh, Hunting Wild. He can make some tokens that way. He could win with Jace still. Yeah, just Island Go. Oof. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Bobble, mill, the gate... <laughs> Travis can function as a mini lantern deck here. He's got a uh, Mishra's Bobble. He can look at the top card of his opponent's deck and then decide whether to mill with Altar of the Brood. Oh, that is very cute. So land oh, mill. Oh, that's the third mountain. That's Steam Vents. Oh, that is Steam Vents. So <gasps> we're on currently seven, nine. Oh, no, no, no. Cinder Glade has ten mountains. So he's got, he, Travis has to mill two more. All right, so we have some more. There, there's a Cinder Glade uh, hiding, hiding up there. All right, so... It looks like he's milled four mountains. So one more mountain and Scape Shift is no longer lethal. Yeah, so four mountains have been milled. There were ten to start with in the deck list. All right, so War of Invention. So we're warring for two here. Yeah, we're getting the Foundry. Milled two. Oh, that looks we like can't a swamp. quite see. I, I can't. It's a swamp. Are you supposed to be playing the play? You are I'm the not, play I'm by I'm play. I'm not amused. Let me just <laughs> say that. All right, so he's going to crack the, the Pentad Prism. And the Bobble? Looks like we're sacking things to Thopter Foundry yeah. here. Abrupt Decay and... All right, we're These gonna see if we can, like we can get uh, Sung Jing An's graveyard more on camera here, because this is becoming quite relevant, and some some of us claim they can't see. It was a misty. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I, I I was still gonna move it. <laughs> I couldn't actually see the misty. How do you say you couldn't? <laughs> no one could. It was off screen. <laughs> These Thopters are also going to start attacking. It, it yeah, I actually like the, the aggressive start getting in there with Thopters, right? Mill. That's a Valakut. That's the a Valakut. Which, also relevant, if both Valakuts go, that also does the trick. Also, we're going to see what's Vitality finally in, in Sung Jin's on hand, and it's just... Well, there's a couple Cryptics, a couple Bring Two Lights, but yeah, on with three Islands. These yeah. All spells that cost four mana or co cost green mana. double green. Hmm, looks like Travis may not have drawn off his Mishra's Bobble, which is a perfectly legal maneuver. So he's going to take the one Cryptic. 
So Travis has alternate win condition here. Now that one of the Valakuts is gone, he can get above 18 life, which he can if he sacks enough artifacts. Then he's able to not die to uh, Valakut plus the remaining six mountains in the deck. Thopter's getting in. Though Sung Jing On then ca has, like, th has to play like the really sloppy mini game of like cryptic bounce my mountain, replay my oh. mountain. There's another mountain. All right. I think, that's, I think that's five. That looks like five to me. Not sure how Sung Jing On is planning on winning this game. What else? If, if those are totally out, what does he have left? Um, hunting Wilds can make some 3-3s. Three uh, lightning Bolt can deal some damage. <laughs> Jace is at the 14. Mind, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Also, Travis is going to start... These, these Sculptors are going to start getting in there. So. Yeah, he's getting in there. Oh, and he's all right, we're going to see. Travis right. is wondering this the same thing. This is the land thing. count. One Steam Vents, two Steam Vents, one Stomper Ground, one Mountain, one more Mountain. He doesn't know the starting <coughs> mountain total. Right, but but On does. But On certainly does. Oh, so On's getting a mountain now. <coughs> Interesting. So can he still get there? I'm not entirely sure what his plan is I in this particular case. I don't know if he knows either. Like, yeah. this is a weird situation. You don't play against Mill very often here. So he's also shortcutting here while he has his deck to play Search for Tomorrow. Getting a forest. Oh, and that swamp got milled also, so it's possible <laughs> Han is going to have trouble getting Bring to Light up to four different colors. Yeah, and that's a search for Escanta. Wow, you can read that from here? Mm-hmm. I got <laughs> laser eyes, yo. I got, I got <laughs> LASIK at some point. <laughs> and Travis is cracking the talisman to get another Thopter, gain just another life. Doing this the hard way, just making a bunch of tokens yeah. one for one, not comboing, just being like, all right, I'm just going to make some Thopters and start attacking for three a turn. Okay, this does drop Sung down to 10. Breeding pool in the yard. That Altar of the Brood is doing a lot of work. It is. And you made fun of the Brood. Well, I'm just used, not used to seeing the brood on the winning side of the mm -hmm. uh, of the game. <laughs> Looks like a, a really large sample size too, to be clear. Dispel. <laughs> it has enabled search for Ascanta though. Ascanta the Sunken Ruin will be making an appearance here. All right, so Ascanta flips. So it's possible that Sung Jing on is plan now is to play as a Jace control deck. He doesn't have any black sources because his Watery Grieve and Swamp both got milled. Are those? Is that the entirety of it? Yeah. That, oh, that's so That's brutal. really clutch because otherwise Bring to Light could go get Shatterstorm. But currently it can only cast it for three different colors. And, uh, you know, having the plan of like Shatterstorm and then Jace the Mind Sculptor could still win the game. Like Jace is a really powerful card. But it's going to be hard to, to assemble that without black mana. He has to naturally draw the, the, bring to, or the, the Shatter Storm. I guess this is uh, when we were talking about the differences between the Bring to Light uh, versus the regular Scape Shift red-green version. This is not something that we talked about too much, but I guess it could happen if you're playing against someone who's randomly milling you. Yeah, this you deck actually run out of way to kill them, you know? This deck is way more vulnerable to mill because the, uh, the Titan Shift deck just has millions of mountains. So we're currently, it looks like in a judge call, I think there's a chance that uh, Sung Jing on drew two cards. Those are the two cards there. Like for his turn by accident, uh, they're going to resolve that as, well, I guess as we watch. Oh, there's an overgrown tomb lurking, so we do know that. Uh, that, that could uh, act as a source of black mana.
Travis, staying well hydrated there. Uh, did you know that it's important when you're playing in a magic tournament to stay well hydrated? Okay, where's the line <laughs> of how many articles there have been written about staying hydrated? Hundreds. hundreds l literally hundreds. Yeah, what, 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 what is it? Where would you... Oh, I don't know, 120 or something. All right. Uh, currently, there are no prismatic omens in this list. Uh, also, there won't be in the future, <laughs> unless unless we're talking about a different tournament. Yeah, so sometimes the the four color escape ship deck plays prismatic omen, which makes it all your lands are mountains and or avoids this particular issue. But there are no prismatic omens here. So it's a somewhat unfortunate situation. It's always, uh, you know, unfortunate when you goof draw. Actually, I, I got a, I got a game loss for drawing an extra card. Oh, when was that? Uh, at Grand Prix Denver in 2011 or something along those lines. Uh, playing on Sam Black. Mm -hmm. I cast an Elvish Visionary. Or I thought I cast Elvish Visionary. Oh, you were comboing off with elves, I think. But right? I cast I, a different I I elf. I think I heard about this. And I drew two cards instead of one. And got a game loss. I mean, it is unfortunate. It does happen. I have seen this happen to elves players quite a bit. Because I think once you're comboing off and you're going through all the motions and you tap your, your elves for mana, then you're bouncing things and then you're replaying things. And some of those elves draw you new cards. I've seen multiple people get into Oh, yeah. Like, very experienced players. Yeah, it can definitely happen. I, I, I did call a judge on myself on that one. It wasn't, wasn't the most fun thing in the world. Yeah, good for you. If you're looking for a table and above, it looks like he might be letting his opponent, the judge is letting the opponent choose which of the cards he's drawing. So, yeah, I believe that is on in line with some of the, the new rules where if you draw an extra card, your opponent essentially gets to thought seize you. That's, or maybe they, maybe you put it on the bottom. That's, that's when you uh, draw too many in your opening hand. No, no, no. If you draw too many in your opening hand, you're just forced to mulligan. Oh, are you really? I thought, I thought your opponent got to thought seize you. No, oh, sorry. When you draw too many in your opening hand, you randomly put uh, two back. Which is the one where your opponent gets the thought sees you then? Right here. Literally this? Yeah. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah, so what happened here is uh, on shortcut it searched for Ascanta and went to draw step and then just drew again. Yeah. And I think as a result, Travis got to look at on hand and choose a card to put to shuffle back into his deck or put on the bottom, something al along those lines. So on ends up with the correct number of cards, but it is a downside because his opponent got to choose presumably his best card. So yeah. it's a it's a way to to have that happen without you getting the complete punishment of getting a game loss. So the Bring to Light got a Far Seek, and that Far Seek got an Overgrown Tomb. Setting up the you know, follow up, bring to light for Shatterstorm. Yeah, the players have fixed uh, their judge call. They are also getting a five minute time extension as a result. Though these softers are doing it. <laughs> yeah, they are. Travis, <laughs> I mean, Travis is winning this game, but you know what he's done so far this game? He's cast an Altar of the Brood and then sacked three artifacts to make three 1-1 one, one Thopters. Like, that's not really what you think of as a as a really good start from a competitive modern Yeah, tech. for sure not. Well, you know, it's not it's not over. That is the Shatterstorm we just saw. Oh, but Travis has an answer? No, he's just going to cash in sure. to get an additional life and an additional mill. The Brood Altar still still uh, getting in there. Altar of the Brood <laughs> milling for an additional one here. Oh, yeah, the Farseek in the graveyard should be exiled. Uh, why? Don't they get exiled? Hold on. Is that how Bring the Light works? I... I no, Bring the Light just casts the card. Yeah, no, it's fine. No, exile that card, then shuffle your library. And then you may cast the card. Sure. Yep. So we are all good. So, 
This is an interesting game now. Travis has nothing, right? He got all his non-land permanents destroyed by Shatterstorm. Sung Jung An can't win the game with that scape shift in hand. In fact, that card is effectively doing nothing. However, Sung Jung An has uh, as Kanta the Sunken Ruin and has a Cryptic Command, so he has a lot of action and he's going to be able to look through his deck and cast a lot of reactive cards. He just needs to find, I think, Jace the Mind Sculptor as his most legitimate win condition from here on out. So he's activating Ascanta. And Travis had a backup Thopter Foundry, which is going to be able to, to pressure uh, Sung Jing on here. And that, that's Hunting Wilds. That is another win condition, uh, depending on how Sung Jing on casts it, but he has enough mana it, to, to potentially uh, pay the kicker. I, I judge the strength of my modern deck by how many of my cards that the opponent has to read while I'm playing it. And uh, I think it's you and a lot of people. <laughs> oh I, yeah. think, I think people love, they're really proud when, when people are picking up their cards all the time. There you see Hunting Wilds on the right. Yeah, and that can make two of Sung Jin's lands into f three threes, and those are, those are three threes uh, uh, permanently. Again, assuming he has enough forest left in his deck, which is actually... So Something that we, we, we can try to figure out. He's got one basic forest, probably one stomping ground. If Oh, no, he might not have any stomping grounds left. Um, two breeding pools. Yeah, he's got enough forest left, pre presumably. This is this this game is, is, is becoming quite grimy, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, like, you're just getting well, down and dirty a, with, like... For a second there, it looked like uh, I was just not going to have a, a way to win. But he's battling through it. Oh, and Han can't cast Cryptic Command. He's got two islands, forest, stomping grounds. That means that Tezra, Agent of Bolas, is, is actually going mm. to gonna resolve. <laughs> yes. All right, so how good is Tezra for Travis? It, quite good in this situation. Can make Grafdigger's Cage into a threat. Can start digging through Travis's deck to find more artifacts. He knows that uh, Hunting Wilds is, is coming down soon, and that, that can lead to an, uh, you know, an attack with two 3-3 three, three forests. So m Travis may want to play Tezzeret a little more defensively, but still going to be quite powerful here. That Grafdrigger's cage is about to rumble. Oh, yeah. It's all grown up. So it looks like this Akur Tribe Elder is going to take one for the team. <laughs> and he's not... Wow, okay, so he did not activate the Tribe Elder. I guess he just has all his islands in play and doesn't want to get the forest because in the mountains and swamps are gone. The forest, he may want to leave for Hunting Wilds or it might have been milled. He might have no basics left in his deck. Another Takura Tribe Elder. It's just a two mana one one now. This is the saddest Tribe Elder. This matchup is great. Cashing in yeah, Thopter Foundry. Yeah, cashing it to itself. All right. And that's partially to use, potentially use Tezzeret to, to make turn it into a 5 5 flyer. Yeah. I mean, that is nice. That's a way to get through uh, the ground for sure. Remember, On's at seven. So it's not that many hits from the Thopter before he's done. And so, and a reminder for people tuning in now that Scape Shift in Sung Jin On's hand is not very productive. Uh, Travis used Altar of the Brood to mill almost all of Sung Jin On's mountains and one of his Valakuts. So that Scape Shift can't actually trigger Valakut anymore. So this is a really tough decision, but he's choosing to take up. And Looked like he was considering taking down, targeting the Thopter. And, and Cryptic Command may be part of that, that uh, decision. Though, if your plan was to take up, caching in Thopter Foundry doesn't sound as appealing because you, you might want to have it in play for whatever artifacts you find now. 
Pithing Needle, and what do you think uh, Travis should name? Uh, as Conta the Sunken Ruin. Sure. That one's, that one's certainly where you want to want to be. Look at that masterpiece schematic there. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I think that countering the needle and bouncing the Grafticus Cage or Thopter token sounds fairly plausible here. Is there any consideration to naming Jace if you think that that's maybe the, the way they're going to kill you? I, I get that I Scott is drawing a lot of cards, but... I think if Travis knew Sungjin On's deck list, you might be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But given the, the amount of knowledge he has right now, it seems really hard to end up... And that it's up, just in play. ...end up doing that, yeah. Poor Steve once again. Like for a tri welder to the bin. It's a cage match. So a kicked hunting wilds can uh, take care of Tezzeret here. Assuming there are forests left to go get, which without seeing the exact catalog of Sung Jin An's graveyard, it's going to be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. How many does he play in, in the main deck? So he's got two breeding pools, a cinder glade, two forests, an overgrown tomb, and three stomping grounds. I think I saw forest, basic forest get milled earlier. Uh, I see one, two, bo I see both breeding pools in yeah, the graveyard. Yeah, both breeding pools are there wow, too. Wow, this, this altar of the brood was very the effective. The brood get in there. Yeah, and, and if we take a look at hunting wilds, I think you do need to get the forests in order to have it have the effect that you want it to. Yeah, you search your library for up to two forest cards, then put them into play tapped, then shuffle your library. If the kicker was paid, you untap all forests, and then they become three threes. All forests put into play this way. Yeah. So you do need to, s to you get need to specific get those forests, forests specifically out. There's a cinder glade. Does he only have one? There's one. That's it is to just the one, but it it that's does enough to kill, kill Tezzeret. Tezzeret. Okay. Oh my god. <sighs> this has been a nerve wracking game. Yeah. This this is this is sweet. I'm really digging it. So. I think that Travis is going to get there unless something changes, though. That Graft Digger's Cage can rumble in for five, putting Sunjin on to two, <coughs> and then as Kant is going to have to dig up some good answers. Though a Jace from Sunjin on could, could carry this game as well. <coughs> this is a bizarre game. This is easily the weirdest game we've seen so far. Oh, yes. And likely will be true until the end of the weekend. It's just weird because these are two combo decks that have a very specific plan that can win in other ways, and both of them are currently on the... Like <laughs> yeah. Not even, like, the second plan. They're on, like, plan C. Yeah, this is, this is like... Oh, there There's it the is. Chase. Chase the Mind Sculptor. Can bounce the Graft Digger's Cage, make it so it's no longer a 5-5. Now Travis is actually in a lot of trouble. The Jace the Mind Sculptor plus that 3-3 Forest could, could take things down. That was well, exactly what he needed to find. And yeah, Travis just stole draw a land. land. Yeah, the Graft Digger's Cage from earlier, but that doesn't do anything on the spot. We, we, we might be getting a game three here. Now, it's possible that On has so few actual win conditions left in his deck that he just wants to do exactly what he's doing right now. So he's Fate Sealing, choosing to pick up and Fate Seal. He left the card up for Travis on top. Yeah, it looked like a Mishra's bobble. The Travis may just crack that uh, Misty Rainforest. When your opponent fate seals and keeps it on top, you're, you often are going to shuffle. Mm-hmm. On is a huge favorite here. Having having a Jace. Oh, he was as on Kanta, he was on Jace or Bust. Yeah, right? and a three three it means that he he he's gonna get this done. Ascanta is very strong. Yeah, Ascanta did a lot of work this game. Oh yeah, he wouldn't. He could not be in it without it.
All right, so what is he choosing to do with this as Kanta? He, he kept it. Yeah, it was on Maelstrom Pulse. Lands getting in there for three. And Travis is nearly locked out. Uh, a second Tezzeret would do the trick. Travis has two in his sideboard. And if he draws another one, he can just play Tezzeret minus and win the game on the spot. So tr Travis has, you know, definitely some cards he could draw that, that, that work here. I mean, he's back in the spot that On was in a second ago where he was on Jace or Bust, and he actually did get it. Maybe Modern is just all about four mana Planeswalkers. <laughs> <laughs> I think Travis is just drawing all lands. Mm -mm. We're going to see an Escanta activation. Oh, that'll lock it up. That, that, yeah, that'll do cryptic. it. Yeah, there's a cryptic. Cryptic command means that no matter what Travis draws next turn, cryptic command will stop it. <laughs> We're going to get a game three. And this that game was wild. absurd. He decided to keep it. Jace is still ticking up. The eight mana three three, the, <laughs> the from hunting wilds, because Sung Jinan only got one forest, is an eight mana three three, and that did the trick. That was enough to to close out this game, though we, it was actually Jace. Yes, but and we are gonna go on to game three. Wow, what a wild game! That game was bizarre. I think both players are probably in awe of like how weird that game was. You know was. when you finish a match of Magic and you're like, wow, I really fought for that victory. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is what's going on over here. So it turns out Mill still not good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the lesson there, but... No, I thought the lesson was you should always mill your opponents. Oh, yeah, yeah right. That, that's what it is. All right, so maybe now in game three, we will see the decks doing what they want to do because this was not what either of those decks want to be doing. They were definitely they were definitely on the backup plan. But that's what I want both decks to be doing because those you games were really the, sweet. They were really sweet, actually. You know what it feels like? You know when uh, people play against Lantern Control and they're not fully locked out and then just like they draw the one thing they need in order to escape? It yeah. is very similar. It, it's like, yeah, it's like when you're playing against Lantern and they like have the lock but only one piece, and there's only, only one mill rock, and you just top deck two, like three good cards yeah, in yeah, a row to get out of it. Yeah, you just do runner, runner, or they're put in a spot where they have to stack their lantern so now they can't see what's coming, and then you maybe manage to wiggle out of it. I'm curious where these players are going for game three. I can't imagine that uh, On is going to change a whole lot, but uh, Travis, Travis has, has a little bit of options. Do you think, what do you think he's changing based on what he saw from that second game? Uh, he might, he might decide whether he wants, uh, like what mix of disruption he wants. And, you know, if Altar of the Brood, I think he's going to keep Altar of the Brood in. It, it was, was good. It was fairly effective that game. This is sweet, because this is the kind of match like we'll have like, in a lot of turn, you know, round four of the modern tournament, because you know we find some decks that are doing well early. Yeah, no. Uh, as a reminder to everyone at home, these players are nine one. Yeah, nine one. They're off to an awesome start at the GP. We got to see KCI earlier. That's not another one that you see typically that late into the tournament. Well, it depends on the player. Yeah, I, I would say there are a couple of people who who tend to do well with KCI. In fact, later in the tournament, you can't help but feature KCI if it continues yeah, winning. Yeah, you're like, all right, good beats. <laughs> See, aren't you happy, everybody? We're not featuring humans versus humans. This is this is like the almost the complete opposite. Yes. The players look like they're potentially discussing what happened in the last game. Who knows? I mean, it was a wild game. I keep I keep looking to see if uh, Travis has a Witchbane Orb somewhere in his deck. It does not look like he does. That's a cool one to word of invention for because you know giving yourself hexproof does protect uh, from a lot of outs. Something li li like Scapeshift, though. 
Yeah, that bring to light for Shatterstorm is a really key part of post-board games here. and mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot Travis can do about that. Adding effects like that on your sideboard when you can't tutor for them, I think it's pretty powerful. It's a shame that there wasn't enough room for it. I wonder if there's just not enough matchups where it matters. Yeah, maybe because of the life gain off the sword, Travis doesn't need Witchbane Orb to stop burn spells, for mm -hmm. example. Travis on the play here. So of note, the players don't have that much time for game three. That that was a really long game too. Yeah, they they have a uh, you know a little less than ten minutes mm -hmm. here. Ooh, we get to see. I love, it. I, I love when they do that on turn one and you just get, oh, this is a really light hand. That's a search for Ascanta that gets taken away and there's a Takura Tribelder. Is that it? <laughs> Both Valakuts and five lands. That is an awkward hand. Oh, and they're trying to save time. I, I like when players do this. They're trying to save uh, time because they have eaten a lot of the clock so far. So An is just going to draw his cards face down, but then because Travis knows about the cards that are face up, he's just going to play with them. Yeah, I, I like that. I, yeah, I, I love when players I frequently do that, do that when, I'm, when my opponent thought teases me. Oh, it looks like there's a five-minute extension, but I don't know if that's factored into the current clock. Okay, it is. It so is. they do have nine minutes left. So welding jar for Travis. Talisman as well. So Kurt Tribelder gets in for one, and we're going to see a pass back. Wow, looks like Travis kept a pretty land-heavy hand. Yeah, it I saw a lot of lands when he shuffled through it. Like, Sung Jin, Jin An's hand is not particularly good, but th this plays quite nicely into his game plan if Travis is just going to keep playing lands and saying go. So Spire of Industry and two lands for... Collective brutality, are we escalating? Looks like not. <laughs> on hasn't drawn a spell yet. He's just he's just on uh on all lands. This is this this game is also very weird. Yes, both it's players it's are just going land go. I, you know, I'd, I'd rather be on the side of the person playing cryptic commands when this is happening. And, and Jason Mind Sculptor maybe. Yeah, and On has a cryptic command in hand, which is going to make things pretty difficult for Travis here. Uh, the, the, just to be clear, Dispel did not counter collective yeah, brutality. Yeah, it was it was discarded to collective brutality. Yeah. So in All a right, sense, it got dispelled, look, but not actually. Spell bam! You got yourself a wall. Yeah, I don't think Spell Skite is going to actually stop on from doing a whole lot. It does mean make Valakut triggers deal two instead of three because you can pay two life to redirect the three damage trigger but that d that's not super relevant here. Alright, so now that they can't attack anymore Sakura so Tribal is going to fetch a land out of his deck. Let's see what on goes for. Basic Island. And they're shortcutting, okay. To get a water green as well. Yeah, it looks like neither player is interested in getting a draw here. Yeah, they're I both, mean they they're have both playing very we fast. We know this clock is right, they have seven minutes left. And as we saw from game two, it could be really grindy if neither player is executing plan one. So and currently that's not happening. Though unfortunately for Travis, you know, on has all his mountains left in his deck. There's no alter to the brood shenanigans this game. Sca oh yeah, Scape if, if Shift, Scape Shift would, is gonna do it. Yeah, Scape Shift would just deal a ton of damage here. He would get um, 12 triggers, which do deal 24 damage through the spell skite. Minus a, a, a each of those blue producing lands can actually save two life. But that still looks like enough here. So I think Scape Shift would actually do it. Now, oh, these games have been wild. Yeah, this game, uh, more weird than wild in the sense that uh, each player's just gone land go for, <laughs> for well, seven turns. I, I, just in the sense that they're so different than I think what you would expect from seeing the decks play each other. Oh. oh. We're, we're going for scape shift here. And the spell skite is not enough to, to keep... 
keep Travis alive. So Sung Jin An is going to cast Escape to float enough mana in order to, to cast Cryptic Command if anything happens in response. Can you walk us through the interaction with Scape Shift and, and Spell Skite? So what, what's going to happen here is Sung Jin An is going to sacrifice those six lands, get six mountains, mm -hmm. uh, end up with 12 Valakut the Molten Pinnacle triggers on the stack, each dealing three damage targeted at Travis. Scape Shift can redirect all of those. However, Travis only has five mana and two are polluted deltas and one are talisman. So let's say to use those for five blue, he takes three going to 11. He redirects five of those triggers to Scape Shift by paying mana. That leaves uh, seven scape shift triggers that he has to pay two life each for. Seven times two life, 14 life. He's at 14, he's at 14 minus, of course, the three for, for uh, the, the spell skite trigger. So this is lethal through a scape, uh, spell skite, which is why On didn't cast Cryptic Command on it. He's just going to have Cryptic Command in hand in case Travis has a negate or mm -hmm. something along those lines. And keeping track of how many triggers are getting uh, redirected, redirected here. Spell Skite, yeah. So that's two. So two on Spell Skite, ten on Travis. It's also just, just to take a look how many basic islands. Travis has three, so he does have enough basics to get off Pluto Delta. But Spell Skite is like kind of like a band-aid over you know when, when you get hit by a chainsaw like it, <laughs> it it makes the damage less but frequently not enough less so three to spell skite four to spell skite i like that the judge is giving the assist five to spell skite dropping into 11 yeah and then pay 14 life. Can only do it. You can only redirect five more triggers. Actually, can't even redirect the last couple. So is there anything that gets him out of this? Looks like he. No, especially not with cryptic in hand. There's not not even like a pact of negation. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the spell the escape ship resolving, so that doesn't even help either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Travis is just going through the motions. Yes, and, and on takes the match. They oh, I love it. it. Looks like they had a really good match. I I am happy to see when the players are like that after the match, especially that was an intense one. They yeah. had two minutes forty nine seconds left in the round. Yeah, and that that was a really sweet match. I, I enjoyed watching that. I think there was a lot of cool action going on and. Both decks winning in ways they're not typically going to win. And also, we're not the decks that we were thinking were going to be the most featured decks at the X1 bracket. It's usually humans are around here. So, Well, we, we have uh, now Bring to Light Scape Shift at 10-1 and, and Thopter Sword at 9-2. and two, So mm -hmm. there's a pretty good chance we hear from one or both of these players later in this tournament. Yeah, I hope they keep running it up. They, and they had an awesome match. I was very happy yeah, to see definitely. that. Yeah, um, definitely. In any case... We will be back soon. Don't go anywhere because we have more magic right after these messages.
back to the booth. Gabby Sparks joined by Luis Scott Vargas, and we have more action here at Grand Prix Las Vegas. Uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at Isaac Sears versus Pedro Michel. So Isaac is playing Blue Moon. Pedro Michel is playing... Michel Pedro, excuse me. Uh, Boggles. And both players are currently sitting at 7-2. and two. Isaac Sears was in the U.S. national team a couple years ago. Yeah, he was they on the same in, team. They as played in uh, France, I believe. Yeah, with uh, Owen, uh, Andrew Beckstrom, and Neil Oliver. Yes, they actually did pretty pretty well that year. They yeah, didn't, they didn't. They did. I don't think they got super far, but they did okay. Well, it, when it comes to the the world champion, the team world championships, you you either win or you don't, and that is true, but. Y Having a good run is important, too, I think. You give people reason, a reason back home to be celebrating for you. What do you think, uh, what do you think Michelle oh fetched for boy. there? Oh, no. Are <laughs> we having this discussion now? So for those who may not be familiar with this card, um, Pedro Michelle fetched what looks like a forest, but is actually not a forest. It, no, it, it is a forest. It is Okay, so it is a forest, but it is also a creature. It's a dryad arbor. This is the From the Vault promo which just looks like a forest. Um, there have been a lot of discussions about whether or not this card should be... See, like, this is... When else have you seen a, a forest eat a bolt? Well, I, Isaac Sears is doing a good job of uh, keeping the game state, yeah. you know, very easy to parse. He's like, you know, I it's, it's going it. to be easier if we lightning bolt that thing. We just don't yeah, worry about it. Yeah, let's just not worry about it. So, uh, quick question, Louis. So, playing uh, Dried Arbor on turn one from Pedro Michel, what does that signify to Isaac? Uh, it means that Michel kept a hand without any one drop uh, creatures or with hexproof and probably doesn't have a core spirit dancer or Silhana Ledgewalker hand either. She likely kept a hand of all auras and then a fetch land and was trying to, you know, hoping to load up the, the Dried Arbor with a bunch of uh, auras. Oh. All right, so there is that two drop, the, the ledge walker for Michelle. Unfortunately for Michelle, uh, Thing in the Ice is very effective in this matchup. And, yeah, we also haven't sped this up. Isaac is just, just going at blazing speed here. Yeah, so Thing in the Ice does not need to target, so it'll be easily able to take care of any hexproof creatures. Yeah, it is pretty woke when it flips, and it will uh, <laughs> it, it, it will take care of it uh, any, any of the uh, creatures that Michelle has in, our, in play. Also... Michelle's not casting anything else this game, probably. Blood Moon is pretty brutal for uh, for Boggles. Yeah, Boggles has one yeah, plane, one these forest. These are just three mountains, and we're getting in there for. Oh, this is not going. This is not going Michelle's way. Is that a Jace Friends Prodigy? No, no, just it's another, 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 another thing. Another thing in the ice. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, Isaac plays like he's worried that they're gonna, you know, g get a draw with 54 minutes or uh, 45 minutes left in the round. I love it. <laughs> oh I yeah, think it's great. It is great. Also, Isaac can't possibly lose this game, so you might as well just just just, just dispense with the formalities yeah. and just go go ham. It is funny because we are watching the time walk match, and sometimes in these matches we do speed them up yeah. just to get them in uh, fit the entire match in before well, the uh, next round starts. But in this case, this is just real time. Well, I'm just really impressed with Rashad uh, that he was able to speed up. You know, one of the players, but not the other. <laughs> that production value, though. <laughs> Michelle gets in with the ledge walker again. Land, bolt your face. Counters off of the thing, the things in the ice. Yeah, that's a nice uh, pair of things in the ice there. Yo. <laughs> Well, they, they won't flip each other, so if Isaac can hit another spell off the Serum Visions, he's going to be able to attack for 14 this turn. He does get to scry, so... There's an opt. He did keep it on top, but now what matters is what's in his hand. And he does have it. So two counters off, flip thing in the ice, target your ledge walker. Well, not really target, just bounce it. He found a lightning bolt and another blood moon. He's keeping both on top. I mean, this game's going to be over before any of this matters. Opt to draw a bolt. <laughs> you and game. He Let's just, go to he game just two. knew the bolt was on top, so he just flipped it over. Yeah, I, that's why he I, said I he left blood moon on top, but it just didn't matter, <laughs> yeah. you know? 
All right, so this is a time walk match, so we get to skip sideboarding. But Luis, what do you think happens to both these decks post board? Uh, they exchange their worst cards in their main deck mm. for their best cards in their sideboard. That's so strategic. <laughs> smart, smart. Uh, Isaac could potentially actually, he's got a nice sideboard plan of Madcap Experiment and Platinum Empyrean. So, Madcap Experiment basically lets him flip cards until he hits top artifact. Actually, you know, now that we watch it, th this just has to be sped up. Th th the way Isaac's playing is not actually possible for a normal human being. So, uh, you know, I ignore our previous commentary, which probably holds true for most things we say anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, so we're going to have to actually speed this up because we are on time on the round. Isaac is going to go on to win this match 2-0. So welcome back to the booth. Sorry we couldn't show you the rest of that. It was a very exciting game one. It was. Uh, Isaac played Blood Moon to cast you know two things in the ice and then just flipped them and reversed it, and bam, that'll do it. It looked like Isaac did win 2-0 mm -hmm. in, in the end there. Yeah, so we will be coming right back to you with the other booth. But in the meantime, we have some messages.